Grade 4 Math, number 74, Fractions and Multi-Step Word Problems. Here's our first one. A cupcake pan holds 12 cupcakes. Emma is making boxes of 18 cupcakes to bring to a bake sale. How many full pans will she need to bake to get four boxes full? Remember, there's 18 in each box, but the pan only makes 12. So we think to ourselves, one pan is equal to 12, one box is equal to 18. Half a pan is 6. If I add that half pan to the full pan, I'll have 18, 12 plus 6. So it's going to take one and a half pans to make one box. If I need four boxes, I'm going to have to do this four times. One and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half. We add the ones, one, two, three, four. We add the four halves. That makes one whole, and those two make one whole. We have four plus two, which is six pans for four boxes. Okay? Two twos make one whole. Two halves make one whole, right? Okay. Tala bought two and five-eighths pounds of jelly beans to fill her large candy bowl. She ate one-eighth pounds while filling the bowl, then ate seven-eighths pounds more. How many pounds were left in the bowl? Well, look at the information that we were given. She originally bought two and five-eighths. Then she ate one-eighth. If she ate it, it went away. That's subtraction, right? She ate another seven-eighths. So that's another subtraction. So what we think to ourselves is, if she ate one-eighth, then seven-eighths, one-eighth plus seven-eighths is eight-eighths. That's equal to one. Remember, when the numerator and denominator are the same, it equals one. All we have to do is take that one away from the two and five-eighths. We could do that mental math, and we have one and five-eighths. We added the amount that she ate and then subtracted that from the original number of two and five-eighths. Okay? So now we know that we could use subtraction to condense information before we subtract it. See? We added them before we subtracted. We know we can make pictures to help us figure out a problem. Emma walked one-fourth mile on Monday, two-fourths mile on Tuesday, and three-fourths mile on Wednesday. If she continues this pattern, how far will she have walked by Friday night? We think to ourselves, what increment is the mileage increasing each day? What is the pattern? Then we add and get a total. On Monday she did one-fourth. On Tuesday it was at two-fourths. So, the difference between one-fourth and two-fourths is one-fourth. That must be what got added, okay? On Wednesday, she was at three-fourths. That's also one-fourth more than the day before. So now we know the pattern is plus one-fourth. So if on Wednesday she was at three-fourths, then we know Thursday must be four-fourths and Friday must be five-fourths. We add these fourths all up together and we get 1 plus 2, because we're going to add the numerators. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 more is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 plus 5 is 15. Now we have an improper fraction of 15 fourths. We ask, how many times does the 4 fit into 15? Because 4 fourths equals 1, 8 fourths is going to equal 2, and 12 fourths is going to equal 3. Okay? Every four-fourths that we have is equal to one whole. Four fits into 15 three times because three times four is 12, and there's going to be three remaining to make the 15. So we know she walked three, and the remaining three goes over the, den the den denominator four as three and three-fourths. Okay? If you want to try one that has a different denominator, see if you can do this one with me. Tala spent an hour and a half doing her English homework, three-fourths of an hour doing her math homework, and one and one-quarter hour doing, drawing a map for her geography class homework. How many hours did Tala spend doing her homework? Okay, well, English was one and a half, math was three-fourths, and doing the map for geography was one and one-fourth. But do you notice that it has a different denominator? How are we going to add these together if that's got a different denominator up there for English? We need the denominators to match so we can add them. So, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, and it makes the denominator 4. We multiply the denominator by 2 to make it a 4, so it matches the other one so we can add it, but the numerator gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 2 also. 
1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and we now have 2 fourths instead of the 1 half. Now we put it into our equation, and we've got, instead of 1 and a half, we've got 1 and 2 fourths. We add that to the 3 fourths and the 1 and 1 fourth. But if you look at the 3 fourths and the 1 fourth here, do you notice that if we add these two together, we'll get one whole, we'll have 4 fourths? So that's one whole, and then that one added to, that one right there added to it makes it a whole two, doesn't it? We have two whole. Now we can even do mental math to add two plus one and two fourths would be three and two fourths, but we're not done yet. We need to simplify because if you turn this in, it would be marked wrong or maybe half wrong because you forgot to simplify. We need to turn this two fourths back into a half and simplify it. So we do the opposite of multiplication and we divide. Divide 2 by 2 is 1, divide 4 by 2 is 2, and we get 3 and a half hours of homework. So, those are some methods that you could use to do fractions and multi-step word problems. You can draw a picture to help you understand it. You can try adding or subtracting part of the problem before finishing it with the, with the other number. You can try drawing yourself a little graph or chart to show how it's changing to help you. We're going to continue talking about fractions, and we're going to talk about multiplying fractions next. So I hope you stick with me, and I hope I see you there. Bye.